Liz, uh, since you arrived in Bellator, you said uh, this was your goal to, to get to a title. Um, you have the opportunity to, to win it on Friday. How does it feel to be here? Uh, it feels great, not only because this is just putting into fruition everything that I've been talking about and dreaming about, but also just to do it under the Bellator banner. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're coming off of a, a massive win, 35 second knockout, one of your best performances of your career. Um, did you kind of soak it in afterwards at all? Was it, did it feel special to you as well? I know just like the, the quickness and the dominance and everything, was that something pretty cool for you? Yeah, it was, you know, it took a little bit for it to kick in because you still have the adrenaline of like, I anticipated 15 minutes and going out there. And when it's that brief, you're like, I still have more to, more to put out what's going on here. Uh, but once I soaked in, I was really happy with my performance, really happy that that was able to set that stone in the path to going for the, the belt. And you've done this for a while. I mean, we were just talking to Juliana and like you were fighting for the UFC title before she even had an amateur fight. So <laughs> do you feel like despite that and being around like that finish that you just had was kind of a reflection of like, hey, I'm still improving. I'm still putting all the pieces together and, and, and really rounding up my game. That's exactly what it was. You know, coming into Bellator, I wanted to make sure that I was showing a new evolution and a new chapter of everything I've been working on. And the Watanabe fight just reflected exactly all that, that it was my intent, my going out there and implementing my will to get to here. Juliana has been a impossible, you know, task for everybody else to figure out. She's undefeated. Um, do you feel like that you see some things though that, that you could, uh, you know, take advantage of and on, on Friday, anything specific? Big time. I mean, I was uh, still training with Alima Lee McFarlane when she was fighting against Juliana. So I had studied tape in anticipation of that fight, uh, not only in simulating how she fought, but also just to be able to pick apart her game to help Alima out. And so I had her game plan down then, and it wasn't implementing the right way, which ended up costing the fight. And then seeing her against Denise, I've just been able to pick it apart even more, knowing exactly what I need to do to defeat her on Friday. Did you watch her last fight? And if so, did you think she won or did you think Denise won? I know there was some kind of controversy there. Yeah, um, I think it was uh, one of those fights where when it comes to, if you go to decision and you're fighting against a champion, you have to exhaust all means and without a shadow of a doubt beat her. And Denise didn't do that. Denise didn't get into her range. I think if any of those combinations that she threw had been in her correct range, not expecting, she was expecting Juliana to be a Muay Thai fighter and sit in the pocket with her. And she wasn't, she was striking and running away, striking, running away. But it wasn't a great performance to me to actually say that you're a champion. It was just enough to stay ahead and to stay safe. And you know, you talked about the things that you see from her that you can take advantage of. What are some of the things you gotta be careful of? What do you think she does really well that you need to you know, be kind of leery of? I think everybody talks about her being a black belt in judo, right? That's honestly like the most challenging thing. But at the same time, if the ground is where she wants to go, I'd love to show her what the ground looks like with me. So I don't think that that's something she wants to use. I think she's gonna wanna keep it standing. And she, if there's nothing else I show in the Watanabe fight, she's not prepared for what I have to bring standing. And I mentioned a minute ago how you've done this for so long and being back towards a title. Is there any sense of like, I need to capitalize on this moment just because you never know how many other chances that you're gonna get? Yeah, absolutely. Each of my fights with Bellator, I've been thinking about that exact thing is I have to capitalize and live in the moment and give everything I have in this fight. Not focusing, as much as I focused towards the belt, and that was what I was saying when I came into Bellator, I was really identifying each fight as being the most important fight I had and trying to put everything into it. And this is the same. This has to be the most important fight, get the belt, and the next one will be the most important fight, and so on and so forth. And the card that you're on um, is, is a card that you know, it's built for military and, and uh, first responders. Was that kind of special for you, given your background and everything, to, to be the one that's on the, the poster for this event? Super special. Um, most of my friends, I was saying the other day, just telling someone, most of my friends are either first responders, veterans, or active duty military. Everybody that's coming out to come see it that I know, they're all first responders, military or veteran. So it means a lot to be able to give back to that community, to be able to put on a show for them with people that I care so much about because they're also my friends, but also knowing how much it builds morale and makes such a difference in their lives to watch something like this. So it means the world to me. Thank you. Liz, you talked a little bit about helping Alima get ready for her fight. And so when you look at, when you walk in, to the cage, how much added confidence does that give you? Because it's almost like you had a study guide before the test a, a couple years ago. Yeah, it definitely helps. Um, I've been studying her and I was ready for it. And Alima had feedback that she was able to give me from her fight, which she experienced the mistakes she saw, the strengths and weaknesses that she felt from Juliana. So it definitely feels like I had a little bit of a cheat coming into this fight. And 
fighting in Hawaii, you're a student of the game, you're someone who respects MMA so much, and to know the history of MMA here in the state of Hawaii, how much pride do you take it in being able to, to be in the main event of a fight here in the islands? I take a lot of pride also because I grew up in Okinawa on, a, on an island. And when I came here, there were definitely moments the first time that I came to Hawaii to sign with Bellator where we were driving on and taking the bus. I was looking around and I forgot for a second that I wasn't home, where I connected so much and identified so many different markers just like Okinawa that it was a weird experience. So I take a lot of pride in being able to come and fight on an island for the belt and feel like I have a relationship with Hawaii that's very similar to home. It's a little bit of a you know different question, but you know in terms of the time of the fight. Now I know every fight's different. I know some people fight in the morning here since we're on such a weird time zone. You know the championship fights at 3 p.m. or whatever it is. Is that something that's different for you? Do you do you care if a fight is a little bit earlier? Do you prefer a little bit later? What is your view on that? Uh, I'm honestly a little bit excited that it's earlier. I mean, uh, all my fights in Connecticut, they were all all with Belcher, All the fights were in Connecticut, so we got out by the time that we did post-conference and did medicals almost midnight. Like I was running back to my hotel room to try and get my celebratory meal and to be able to enjoy life after. And there wasn't, everything was closed. So it's great to be able to do that. And I also trained so many different times throughout the day that this lines up perfectly with one of the, my training cycles at home. So this is, this is great timing. Next question from Jay. Hey, Liz, welcome back. And, uh, you know, as was mentioned, we did have Juliana in here just a few moments ago. And one of the things we asked was whether or not she considered you her toughest challenge to date. She actually said no. She said she considered maybe Aliander Lar or someone else. Just curious if you wonder if you're being overlooked or maybe she's putting on a front. Uh, I think in part it's a front. And if I am being overlooked, great. I love being the underdog and being underrated. It just makes it that much sweeter for me. And you talked about watching, uh, obviously you helped... Uh, Lima Lay prepare for that fight and then watching the Denise fight. How much of an evolution did you see in Juliana's game? Zero. Uh, she looked like the same fighter in every fight that I've seen so far. Next question, Kobe. Hi, Liz. You fought pretty much all of the top mixed martial artist women in your divisions. And I'm wondering, who would you say she's most like in as far as your opponents have been? Uh, most like, um, not really many of them. Most of them are, are pretty engaging. She definitely seems to be limited in striking and, and elusive and evasive. Um, and in most opponents, I'd say that they were ready to just throw down, even if it wasn't their usual fighting style, that seemed to change when they would get in there with me. Okay. And that being the case, do you feel like you're going to have to take the fight to her? Absolutely. Nice. Good luck. Thank you. Dylan. Hey, Liz. Nice to see you again. You too. Hi. Uh, sorry about that. You just alluded to you signed your Bellator contractual agreement originally right here in Hawaii. Now you're fighting for the Flyway World title in the same place. How does it feel to be back, not cornering a teammate, but this time fighting for a championship yourself? Uh, it feels great. Uh, like I was saying, is I feel such a special connection to Hawaii and that it seems very similar to Okinawa. And I've missed home for so much. I love tropical islands. I love the culture here and everything that I've seen firsthand as well as experiencing it from Alima. So to come back and be able to fight on this island, it means a, means a lot to me.